Good evening, and welcome to the uh, May 13th, 2019 uh, Muskogee City Council meeting, and we have decided to get the pleasant part of this meeting out first. And so we have an a, a, a acknowledgement to give, and if you all will join me down uh, front. With Bruce Williams is here. Yes. Thank This is Bruce Williams, the employee of the month of the city of Muskogee. And I'll read it. <laughs> Bruce has been working as the network administrator for the city of Muskogee since August of 2007. Prior to working for the city, Bruce worked as at Muskogee Regional Medical Center where he started in the laboratory and then moved into the IT field. Bruce and his wife Lisa moved to Muskogee in 1982 after he graduated college so that he could attend a medical technology internship at MRMC. After completing that course of study and passing the boards, ASCP, American Society of Clinical Pathologists, he began his work in the lab where he learned about these new computers that were starting to show up everywhere. Since then, he has worked with computers, which is one of his hobbies. He tried to teach me something when I first came up here, but he wasn't that good. <laughs> um, after transferring out of the lab, Bruce was a clinic system analysis, analyst, 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 and then moved to network administrator at MRMC. After 24 years, Bruce decided he wanted a change and decided to come and work for the city. Bruce's other hobbies include driving the boat while his wife skis and target shooting. Bruce and Lisa have raised two children, Rebecca and David, and have dragged them through school and college. Bruce calls Muskogee home and plans to do so even after he retires. And here's your certificate, and what would you like to say? I'd like to say absolutely nothing. <laughs> I have, can I borrow your pen? <laughs> Congratulations, we all deserve it. Now we'll get started with the invocation by council member Jamie Stout and then uh, remain standing for the flag salute. Please bow. The Lord, just thank you for this day. Thank you for the many blessings that you give to, give to us each day, dear Lord. Just be with us now as we conduct our city business, dear Lord, and that we do it to everything to glorify you. And we ask this all in your name. Amen. 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 Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. 
<coughs> Mayor Janie Boydston. Here. Evelyn Hibbs. Here. Dan Hall. Present. Marlon Coleman. Here. Jamie Stout. Here. Wayne Johnson. Here. Patrick Kale. Here. Ivory Van. Van. Sorry. Derek Reed. Here. <coughs> Make a motion we excuse Ivory. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Boydston. Yes. The motion carries. Uh, you've had a chance to look over the city council meetings of the special call meeting of April 15, 2019, the special call of April 19, 2019, and the regular session of April 22, 2019. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Is there any discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Boydston. Yes. And the motion carries. You've looked over the consent agenda. Is there anything anybody wants to uh, move to the regular agenda? Move for approval. Second. Okay. Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Boydston. Yes, and the motion carries. We'll go to the regular agenda, item 14. Receive report from staff and discuss recommended changes to the tourism contract and take other necessary action. Mr. Miller and Mr. Tucker. Yes, uh, we have uh, presented last week at our committee meetings uh, a, an in-depth memo regarding uh, a couple of different topics. Number one, regarding um, changes uh, that we think are appropriate for any contractor moving forward. Uh, and number two, regarding the various structures that the council had asked us to consider for potentially administering a tourism contract or tourism-related activities um, moving forward into the future. And so uh, we won't necessarily rehash all those details of that memo today. We've had a, a chance to talk um, in the last week. Uh, Mr. Tucker, though, has put together something that I believe Councillor Hall requested, which is more of a representation of what those um, different formats might look like. And so I'll let him kind of walk us through what those uh, options are, those different structures for tourism. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Um, Mayor, members of the council, uh, as we discussed at our last meeting, um, Mike and I had uh, prepared our memorandum and submitted it to you, which uh, consisted of a review of state law as well as the existing uh, chamber contract, and then we recommended certain modifications which were outlined in that memo, which we were recommending uh, be implemented. So those are the things that are reflected in that memo. Um, one of the things that uh, I will draw your attention to uh, was some uh, questions that we received related to um, if we are going to take any action to make any modification, what does that actually look like? And in speci in spe with specificity, we're talking about if this were to be transferred uh, to the Muskogee Redevelopment Authority for action. So in your packets on page 40 through 42, uh, I have put together a couple of diagrams for you that I want to go over uh, today. Uh, the first is, and these are in the uh, order that we have uh, discussed in the memorandum, the first is the direct chamber contract method. The second is the trust management model, and the third is the city department model. And as you recall, these are the three uh, potential organizational structures for handling tourism uh, moving forward in the future. So the first is the direct contract method, and with that, um, it looks much like what we do now. Uh, the City of Muskogee contracts with the Chamber of Commerce for tourism activities. Uh, new changes would include establishing standards and require uh, specific financial accountability. Uh, those provisions are already in the ex existing contract, but as you remember from our memo, uh, we requested that those be more articulately defined. Um, concurrently with the establishment of that new contract, the City of Muskogee would also establish a committee and appoint its members and would also adopt the budget as recommended by the Tourism Committee. Um, then the chamber would present and the committee would approve an annual business plan 
uh, which would formulate the scope of work for any given year. Uh, the chamber would also present the claims, uh, a budget presentation, outlines and reviews of measurables and deliverables that are articulated. Uh, the Tourism Committee would review those and then ultimately would provide reports, uh, present expenses of claims, present measurables and deliverables, um, as well as review the audit and recommend it for approval uh, and submit all of those documents to the City of Muskogee. The City of Muskogee, with regard specifically to the claims, would then approve those claims as part of its normal claims approval process. Uh, many of you remember, well actually I wouldn't say remember because you did it last week, um, uh, and every uh, week before committee, uh, we review all claims uh, for anything paid, any, any dollars expended on behalf of the city, and that gives you the opportunity to ask any questions of the treasurer and the city manager, and then if you find that those are lawfully paid, then you move to approve those. Uh, and that process is uh, in accordance with our existing city code. And so um, this model keeps things the way they are, meaning the relationship with the city and the chamber, but of course uh, incorporates all of the recommended contractual changes uh, that we have discussed at our last meeting and that are represented in the memorandum. Uh, moving on to the trust management model, which was uh, what the motion of Councillor Coleman was in committee. Uh, the first thing the city would do is transfer tourism revenue uh, to the Muskogee Redevelopment Authority. As we articulated last time, the Redevelopment Authority is a public trust of the city, and one of the uh, items that it has authority to manage uh, in the trust indenture is tourism programming. So that would be an appropriate um, aspect of the trust. The Muskogee Redevelopment Authority would then contract for tourism activities uh, with the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, additionally, the Redevelopment Authority would create a board, and that would be done by resolution. It would designate the tourism board of the Muskogee Redevelopment Authority. It would grant them authority to review and approve claims, approve an annual business plan, approve a budget, and all other financial reporting. The Tourism Board would effectively manage the contract under the guidelines provided by the Muskogee Redevelopment Authority. The uh, Chamber would then present the annual business plan, uh, the budget, the monthly expenditures, the measurables, deliverables, and all other information required by the Board. <laughs> the Board would, of course, report to the trustees of the Muskogee Redevelopment Authority, which, as you all know, is uh, the members of the City Council, um, and they would report as needed. So if there were any information that you wanted, if you wanted to specify when this was created, uh, if you wanted it monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, or annually, uh, and you would also approve the budget uh, for the expenditures of tourism, or excuse me, for the allocation of tourism as recommended by the Board. The third model is the city department model, and this is effectively the one where the city brings tourism in-house and creates a separate department. So uh, under that model, the city of Muskogee would create uh, a department, uh, establish its duties by ordinance, and would also direct the city manager to budget uh, funds necessary for operation of the department. The city of Muskogee, like they do for all city uh, departments, would also at the end of the day approve claims for expenditures. Uh, moving that under the city manager, the city manager would provide direction on tourism activities based upon policy decisions from the council. Uh, he would require measurables and deliverables of the department. The newly appointed department director would handle the day-to-day -day operations and who would of course report to the city manager. Um, the department, the newly created department, would compile expenditures in accordance with the uh, purchasing policy of the city and would submit those to the treasurer to process his payments. Uh, the treasurer would ensure claims that are lawfully paid, would maintain books and accounts, would maintain uh, all checking and uh, uh, methods of payment, and would also print, present those claims to the city council through the city manager for their approval. Uh, additionally, the tourism department would uh, prepare an annual scope of work um, to present to the city manager and be in accordance with our general budget process. So those are the three uh, models that were discussed at our last meeting. Uh, a little bit more fleshed out and put on paper so you all could uh, sort of visualize what those would look like. And um, I'm happy to answer any questions and I know uh, Mr. Miller is as well. So we turn that over to you to give us further direction. 
maybe good to have public comment at this time. Okay. Before we get into that, uh, we have several people who have signed up to speak to this issue. And uh, we will start off with Ann Barker Ong. If you'll come up and give us your name and address. My name is Ann Barker Ong. I live at 7744 West Shawnee. I do business at 350 South 40th, Muskogee 74401. Ladies and gentlemen, all, I have lived in Muskogee for 40 years. My business has been and continues to be a member of the Chamber of Commerce. I've served on the board. I was treasurer for two years. I was chair of the board for one year. And in, I no longer am on the board, but my company still belongs to the chamber and we still participate in and support the chamber. Uh, during my service on the board, there was never ever any incidence of violation of any rule or regulation regarding its fiduciary responsibility of the chamber. Um, any questions that came up were answered fully with uh, facts provided from the evidence and there was never any question that the chamber handled funds properly and kept appropriate records. The chamber's relationship with the city of course is that of a uh, governmental contract. Uh, the chamber provides tourism development services to the city. Lots of governments and governmental agencies do that. Nothing unusual about that. And to my knowledge, during the time that the Chamber has had this contract with the city, they have upheld their responsibilities and the terms of the contract at all time. Um, they have reported to the Council at the Council's request or annually. The city has tried on previous occasions uh, to perform this function in-house and has trouble doing it due to staffing issues and other uh, issues of which I'm not fully aware, I uh, admit. The city and the chamber both have brought in outside consultants and advisors on the subject of tourism. Those efforts were roundly criticized, ridiculed, and rejected by any number of people. Why do we now think that we can find some new superstar talent out there who's going to come in from somewhere and bring all the tourists to Muskogee? I don't know. Uh, whatever de decision you make about the contract, I urge you to remember that the Chamber has done a good job over the past years. We have had some ideas of things that they might be able to do more effectively and they're willing and open to hearing about those things. They have been open, they have been honest, they have won several awards in tourism and they have earned our trust and our support. I'm fully in favor of the chamber getting, of the city getting what it wants in terms of uh, the tourism contract uh, and I think that the only thing you need to do is spell that out and I think that's what you're in the process of doing. Uh, I really think that uh, two of the options you've listed are the best ones, obviously, to contract it out and the, the trust idea could work. Seems to me like it would add another layer of bureaucracy, but what the heck. And <laughs> And in the last 40 years, I have seen Muskogee make enormous progress. This is the best of times so far, to my knowledge, in Muskogee. I have also seen her get shot in the foot several times by people who, ha who don't know. They haven't done their homework and they don't know the facts. We cannot expect to reach our goals if we keep getting within spitting distance of the target then starting to doubt ourselves about what we're doing and take a new course. So it's a test of endurance for the hardiest among us. Cities that are successful do not have a citizenry that agrees on everything, but they do have a sense of collective efficacy. 
They believe that together we can get things done. Um, for almost a year, OU came over here. Uh, their Institute of um, Quality for, uh, Communities and they studied Muskogee for almost a year. They told us that we're among the most hopeful cities you could imagine or wish for. And I think we all want to have something to give and to gain by being fully invested in our city. Henrik Ibsen said, a community is like a ship. Everyone ought to be prepared to take the helm. I think it's important to note that he said <clears throat> prepared, not just willing. Thank you very much, Ms. Ong. And our next uh, speaker is uh, Rob Roche. And if you would just please give us your name and address. Hello, my name is Rob Roche. I live at 101 South Country Club Road, number G1, Muskogee. Um, before I get started and before my time uh, starts, I'd like to request council uh, additional time uh, up to an additional 10 minutes because as you know, uh, I passed out quite a, a large stack of paper last week. I was accused by the paper of not providing evidence even though I did provide information uh, and so I would like to actually present uh, that information today. So could I request additional time at this, at this moment? I move that we approve the additional 10 minutes. Second that. Okay. It's been moved and seconded that Mr. Rosh be given an additional uh, 10 minutes and uh, roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson? No. Evelyn Hibbs? No. Patrick Kale? No. Marlon Coleman? Yes. Derek Reed? No. Dan Hall? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Mayor Boydston? No. I would be willing to hear Mr. Rashi out. Uh, I don't think we have time to take an excess of 10 minutes, but I would like to make a motion that we give him at least an additional three minutes. Second. Second. Okay. We have a new motion. Uh, Mayor. Yes. May I ask how many we have signed up to speak this evening? Uh, we have quite a few. A total of eight. So. Mr. Roshwood is the second speaker. There will be six more. I would just ask that we understand that we're going to give the same to each and every speaker. <clears throat> I'm willing to. I was willing to give Mrs. Ong more time. I was just being courteous to our citizens to give out the information that they think we need to have to make a decision. Whether we agree with their information is another story. but to allow people to come up here to talk to us about a situation this important? I say yes, we should listen to them. I just ask that we be equal. So we got a motion and a second. I just wanted oh, to, yeah, I'll I just like the clarification of how many yeah. we got signed up to speak. And I'm willing to give anybody that asks for extra time that, not just Mr. Rob. Okay. Any other discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson? Yes. Evelyn Hibb? Yes. Patrick Kale? Yes. Now we're voting on giving everyone eight minutes. No. No. We're only no. voting, we're on, voting on this one. We can only do it one at a time. Three additional okay. minutes. To if the anybody hour. needs time, they ask us for it and we'll give them extra time. Okay. Thank you. My, my motion was just for this one particular incident, and I think we should probably examine each. You know, some may not need eight minutes. Okay. But the motion that I have on the floor is for an additional three for Mr. Roche. Okay. Because I thought we was going to give Mrs. Ong some extra time. I thought she was going to need it there for a minute because yeah, I seen right. her going through her papers. I was going to give her three minutes too. Patrick some people it doesn't me. take as much time to yes. get to the point. Okay. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Boydston. Yes. And the motion carries. So you have eight minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Council. Today I want to discuss some bad decisions that at best appear to have wasted public funds, at worst could probably result from 
uh, further action by the state auditor uh, and potentially lead to a criminal uh, investigation. Um, and I know that that is uh, a pretty, uh, um, you know, uh, blatant accusation. But as you guys know, or may not know, uh, a few years back, the exact same process was followed uh, in an investigation of the Tahlequah Chamber uh, that ended up being the, having the chamber president prosecuted and uh, convicted of uh, crime. So this is, these are serious allegations. And that's the reason why I asked for more time and wanted to go through this information. So uh, first of all, you need to know that uh, some things were misreported uh, in the Phoenix uh, last week in Wednesday's paper. First of all, I did provide evidence. Second of all, the chamber is uh, under the guidelines of the state auditor because they're using tourism funds. So to the extent that we're talking about tourism funds, those are in the public domain and subject to the state auditor. I can give you the statutory language. But let's look at Exhibit A that I gave you, which is a copy of the chamber contract. Specifically, I want you to look at uh, um, Section 6, which I believe is on page 2 of that contract in that exhibit. And it says, all expenses will be supported by documentation to satisfy purchasing procedures of the city. I'm going to contend that that didn't happen. Uh, and you're going to see that in a minute. I'd also like you to note that Section 7 of that same contract in that same exhibit says that such funds shall not be commingled with any other revenues of the chamber. Again, I'm going to show you where that's happening. And finally, in the, uh, the last violation of the current contract is in Section 8 that says that they have to provide an audit in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. That didn't happen either. So let's go, let's go to proper pr uh, purchasing procedures first. Exhibit F that I gave you shows that the tourism uh, spent uh, $1,291 on legislative affairs. You can see Exhibit G for the detail of that, uh, where they have a specific line item for that. And I would ask, did the city approve lobbying in DC as a tour tourism expense? Is that even legal to use public funds for lobbying? I wonder what was being lobbied uh, that was tourism related and not really a chamber expense. Is the chamber president properly registered as a lobbyist with the, uh, as the tourism board as her client. Exhibit H, mileage. Really, the chamber president is charging mileage of $2 to go to Jim and M's Coffee to meet with a board member. How about the tourism director charging three miles uh, to uh, uh, go on chamber business for a ribbon cutting? Better yet, charging five uh, miles to go pick up Chick-fil-A for the chamber office for an internal lunch. What's troubling here is the Arvest Bank networking event for 119 miles. How does that relate to tourism? You know, it's interesting that uh, Arvest is one of the chamber board members. Don't know. We also have expenses for mileage to go to the Muskogee VA and OG&E for leadership classes. Tourism related? I don't know. I'd like to hear how, that, how that's answered. In Exhibit I, we have documentation that the chamber was using tourism funds to purchase nearly $900 of glassware for the chamber banquet. Again, I'm curious as to what the return on investment is to attract tourism when we all know that banquet is for chamber business members. Exhibit J, we find an uh, expense on tourism to buy the son of the chamber's auditor a gift of a watch. Hmm. Don't know how that's going to get us some more tourism money. These are just a few things that I was able to find in a first pass of some of the expenses that I would seriously doubt that the city, under the normal purchasing uh, authority, would approve. However, there is a much more disturbing thing going on here with the financials that involves large sums of money. In addition to these multiple nickels and dimes that I just uh, cited for you, that involves the negotiation of a loan to purchase, and it's really a shell game, that's what's going on between public uh, tourism funds and the Chamber's real Oki store. This is something that the state auditor is going to be very interested in. In Exhibit K, we see just one example of tourism purchasing merchandise from the Chamber's store. In Exhibit C, the auditor reports that a loan in the amount of $14,427 was taken from public tourism funds by the chamber. This loan appears to be different amounts in exhibits D, E, and F. When the city attorney was contacted about this loan, he confirmed it was for the cost of the merchandise sold by the chamber. Mr. Tucker also confirmed that this loan was not approved by city council, and the city does not have any documentation about this transaction. So what's going on with tourism funds? I think that maybe uh, the tourism funds are fronting money for the chamber store, and the chamber is retaining the sales. This is definitely something to watch as we go forward. Commingling funds. 
in addition to what I would contend is coming on funds of the above expenses I just talked about, uh, I would draw your attention to Exhibit I, where there are many instances of the chamber identifying where they commingled funds, and then they tried to correct it. You know, I, I, I wonder if we got, if they caught them all. You know, I've given props for catching some of them, but in Exhibit L, you'll also see where the tourism went to a conference on how to be uh, a better chamber executive. Not a tourism executive, but a better chamber executive. They didn't catch that one, which makes me wonder. Was tourism reimbursed for her time, providing her salary once she, uh, uh, since she's full-time tourism? But like a lot of commingled expenses, we have chamber and a tourism website. We have computers, equipment, phone systems, cell phones, so on and so on. Those are all probably being subsidized by the tourism public money for the benefit of the chamber. There's no detailed documentation on how these prorated things are going on. Uh, there's just line items in a spreadsheet, but no detail. The curious carryover rollover funds. This again is something the state auditor is going to be interested in. Because you see the chamber uh, sent a response to the state auditor regard regarding rollover funds that they're accounted for. But here's the problem. In Exhibit D, uh, the 2016 uh, um, financials, there's a carryover net assets uh, for the year of $122,301. But in that same budget, there's a line item on Exhibit M for $50,000. Numbers don't add up. Exhibit E shows a net asset carryover of $222,301. And the corresponding budget Exhibit N shows a carryover of $50,000. Again, not add up. Exhibit F shows a carryover of net assets of $135,343. And budget Exhibit N shows a carryover of 13000 Again, don't add up. Where's the money going? We know that none of this is documented. The funds are not accounted for anywhere. Uh, the, there's not a written agreement. It's just a verbal agreement made uh, by a previous chamber president or a previous city manager. So I would kind of conclude in my last minute that they don't have a measurable strategic plan. They've not created a vision and stuck to that. Uh, that's measurable. I want to underscore that. Additionally, our other key attractions, such as the Oklahoma Music Hall of Fame, are being rejected for tourism monies. See the attached letter, Exhibit O, from Amy Love, the interim uh, director of the Music Hall of Fame, saying they've been rejected because they're not uh, characterized as tourism by the, the chamber staff. So we have lack of sales uh, tax revenue over the years. We may have a blip or two, but overall, there's, there's not a good track record. Lack of heads and beds, according to the Hotel Motel Lodging Association here in Muskogee. And you know, we, we still, even though we spend thousands of dollars on tracking, we still default to generic formulas for tourism. Finally, on governance. The tourism board is run by the chamber and chamber staff and chamber board members. There's no power to hire and fire uh, by the tourism board. They're not approving the detailed expenses uh, and the high level budgeting, they, they only get that 20 minutes before the meeting. So, you know, I would say, I'm out of time, but that pretty much uh, hits most of the main points. I'd be open for questions and answers if uh, any of the counselors would like to ask me uh, anything about the information I just presented. Thank you, Mr. Rosh. Our next speaker is uh, Pete Carraway. If you would give us your name and address, please. Yeah, Pete Carraway, uh, 118 Golf Lane, Muskogee, Oklahoma. I moved here in the 80s, so that would make it, what, 40 years? I'm originally from Georgia by way of the military and by the VA hospital. I thought many things I might want to say, but I'm going to condense it down. I talked with Mr. Coleman outside briefly. I didn't see Pat soon enough to bushwhack him, but uh, there's no secret that, that I have supported some things against the chamber, one of which was the mayor's state of the city message when Mr. Van brought it up three years ago. Uh, as a result of some of my comments, I did spend some time with Treasure at the chamber at her request. I still have nothing against the chamber, but a few things I disagree with. And without rehashing it, which I didn't come here to do, <clears throat> uh, we'll just drop it there. My concern are some of the uh, 
programs that are associated with the chamber, one of which is the Bridges Out of Poverty. I read the brochures and during my uh, mayoral fail campaign, I got my butt smeared. But nonetheless, I learned a lot. The uh, Bridges Out of Poverty is a result of uh, seeing their brochures and uh, I went over there with one of the instructors. I read their book, asked questions. That's a valuable program. And if it's funded by the chamber or out of the tourism or wherever we get it from, we should make sure that that's not jeopardized with whatever decision you make regarding this contract. One thing I've always wanted to know is what part of our citizenry, particularly the younger people, are taking advantage of the bridges out of poverty. Are most of the students Hispanic, or they're black, or they're Indian, or just what? That should tell you a lot right there. I think it's a valuable program. Uh, also, I became aware of the Neighbors Helping Neighbors. I don't know if that exactly falls out of the chamber, but once again, I watched Mr. Van. I watched him at the cemetery. I was late getting there because I went to the wrong cemetery. But I do agree that's what Mr. Van and others, Derek over here doing with the neighbors, helping neighbors. I don't think we should jeopardize that if it comes out of tourism dollars then I think we should continue to find a way to keep that going. Now to address the, uh, uh, the chamber. The chamber represents the business community of Muskogee. That's my opinion, and everybody's entitled to their own opinion. The business community should support <coughs> the chamber through its membership. The government or the city can only provide a climate which is inducive and conclusively helps the atmosphere and improves the atmosphere in which our vendors, our store owners are going to operate within the city. But when we start providing tax dollars to the chamber, I think we run into if not actual potential, great potential of conflict of interest because of the way the committees respond. We have one member of the tourism committee that I believe is the chairman of the hospital foundation. He also is involved with the Music Hall of Fame, which also got a, a loan, and Roy may keep me straight on this, the loan came out of the hospital foundation to what, urban renewal? And then to the Music Hall of Fame. We threw two uh, music events out at the uh, hat box and it went belly up. I think it was in the tune of $90,000. The gentleman was non-pulse about his activity and didn't acquit himself very well when the, when the Muskogee Foundation met last summer. In fact, he couldn't even define what tourism was. I believe you're out of time, Mr. Carraway. Okay, so that's what I wanted to speak to. In Thank summation you. was the uh, benefits of several programs and to watch out that we don't lose those. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is DJ Thompson. I'd like to remind everyone if they need additional time, uh, be, be sure and ask. And your name and address, please. CJ Thompson, 310 West Broadway Avenue. I'm the president and CEO of the Chamber of Commerce. And I would like to request my extra time, please. Move for approval. Second. 
discussion. I think you need to state what that time is, Ms. Thompson. Three please. minutes, please. Thank you. Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Jamie Stell. Yes. Mayor Boydston. Yes. Motion granted. Okay. Give me Thank just you. A, give me just a second to sure. reset. Okay. Um, wow, where to, we be, where to begin? Uh, I had some prepared notes, but I kind of feel like maybe I need to address some other things. Uh, first of all, the, um, there were several things raised by Mr. Rosh that I'm not sure where those came from or what the evidence is. I would love to see that. Um, to my knowledge, you don't have to be a registered lobbyist to do lobbying work in the nonprofit world. Um, the Arvest event, just off the top of my head, I can tell you it was the state tourism uh, director that was speaking at that event. We were invited to attend that, so our tourism director did attend that in Tulsa. So uh, with that, I'm happy to answer other questions and go into detail as needed. Um, but thank you for having us here tonight and thank you for the comments that have already been shared. First, on behalf of the chamber board and staff, I want to thank city council excuse me, as well as city staff for the ongoing partnership and collaboration that we have with one another. We sincerely appreciate that partnership and the conversations that we've been able to have over the last week have been invaluable uh, for information for uh, the chamber and for the future of Muskogee's tourism program. We believe this type of open and honest relationship is invaluable when trying to achieve the positive outcomes we all want for our businesses, our citizens and our economy and only helps to strengthen the opportunities each of us has to make Muskogee better. Second, I want to emphasize that currently tourism in Muskogee has an excellent reputation. Lieutenant Governor Matt Pinnell recently spoke to a group here in Muskogee and said, Muskogee does tourism and economic development as well as anybody. Mr. Pinnell went on to attribute the town's successes primarily to its marketing campaigns, such as the Real Oki campaign, quote unquote. He also made note of the unique attractions we have here, such as the Batfish, the Oklahoma Music Hall of Fame. And I will just say that uh, recognition like this is a result of years and years of community co collaboration, partnerships, exciting and unique venues, and hard work by a lot of volunteers and a lot of staff from various organizations, including the city. None of it has been achieved in a silo, and that includes the Chamber's work in tourism. Although we as locals sometimes view things a little differently than those outside of our community, it is a fact that tourism is doing well in Muskogee and that Muskogee is doing well at tourism. From fiscal year 2012 to present, which is the year after we raised the tax here in Muskogee for hotel and motel lodging, the tax uh, dollars collected has increased 26%. To give you something comparative, sales tax has only increased 2% in that same amount of time. So I think we're doing an okay job. Can we still do better? Of course we can. And that is what we want to try and do with a negotiation of new contract. The Chamber will work with you to do tourism better while not losing the momentum that we have gained all of these years and all the work we've done. Third, your Muskogee Chamber also has an excellent reputation statewide among many different groups and individuals. We've been recognized at the state level and are often asked to consult with other chambers or groups about the successes of our programs and high quality management and service. On a daily basis, we make every effort to demonstrate good leadership, quality services, and standards of excellence. How we work for tourism is no different. In my time in Muskogee and with the Chamber, I've worked closely with many of you and many different projects and programs that are all designed to make Muskogee better. I view tourism exactly the same way, as I have each and every other project or program I've had the opportunity to be involved in. We always give it 100%, always make it the best that there is and set the standard. Do it with integrity, do it with grace, and help educate others on why it's important. Hopefully these things show in everything we do as a chamber and for a city. Fourth, what you will not see from me tonight or from my staff team is trying to tear down, diminish, or negatively impact the work done by others who are trying to achieve great things for Muskogee. Tactics like that are not helpful, don't contribute to progress, don't facilitate trust and collaboration, and don't help the city or our citizens. 
We will always take the high road and stand on our own achievements and strengths instead of tearing down others to make our own agenda easier. What you will see and what we will continue to do is maintain best practices in management, financial accounting, program evaluation, and all other standards that make us transparent, accountable, and successful. We will demonstrate respect and collaboration in all that we do. We will always listen, consider the situation and opportunities, have professional and meaningful discussion, utilize our volunteers and city leadership, make a well thought out decision, and always do what is best for Muskogee. We know you have several options and many comments and opinions to consider this evening. We thank you for hearing ours. You may hear things from other speakers that raise questions about the chamber or how we've performed, our level of transparency or accountability, and our ability to be something other than an excellent partner and contract agent for tourism services. We have always and will continue to provide you, city staff, and any citizen any and all information requested in accordance with the Oklahoma Open Meeting, Open Records Law, and whatever is necessary to answer all questions. If it hasn't been clear from our conversations this past week or any other time before that, or from actions of either the Chamber Board or me prior to tonight, I would like to emphasize that we welcome and in fact invite you to ask us those questions and seek the answers. We welcome the opportunity to show you how we spend tourism funds, <coughs> how we operate the program currently, best practices we've learned, ideas we have moving forward, and most of all, we welcome questions about our level of accountability, transparency, and integrity. I can confidently say there is nothing we do that the Chamber Board of Directors or staff is not willing to share with you. <clears throat> In closing, when considering your options this evening, please know that the Chamber is here to work with city leadership to ensure Muskogee has the best tourism program possible. That is our only agenda. Our only agenda is to make sure we have the best tourism program possible. There are a lot of great ideas and considerations on how to achieve that. We will listen, we will partner, we will work with stakeholders every step of the way to make the needed improvements that are necessary. In administering the tourism contract, on behalf of the city, we want to leverage every asset Muskogee has to offer, maximize and capitalize on the synergy between the chamber mission and the tourism mission, continue being innovative and creative in our efforts, and share resources where appropriate in order to lower all costs to every entity. We look forward to working with city staff on a new and improved contract for tourism services and appreciate your support and the confidence you've placed with us in such an important piece of Muskogee's economy and future. Again, thank you for the time tonight. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, DJ. You're very welcome. And our next speaker is Heather Kane. Oh, okay. Then our next, uh, Mark Patel. Thank you, ma'am. I'd like to withdraw my request. Oh. Thank you. Okay. Then we come to Kim Lynch. Name and address, please. Kim Lynch, uh, 207 North 2nd Street in Muskogee. I want to correct first, um, Mr. Carraway, I really appreciate that you thanked us for Bridges Out of Poverty, but that's actually one of my programs with Neighbors Building Neighborhoods, which is also <laughs> one of my programs. But as a tourism chair, I'm here to speak for you for that. Um, I didn't plan any speaking. I think that um, I've read with Mike and with Roy on the trust management model. I firmly believe that that is the right process to go through. It gives accountability as well. I serve as the tourism chair. I am not on the board, so I have no accountability to the board, but I want you to thoroughly look at that trust management model. My last statement before I get to you is please make sure to vote. Tomorrow, vote often. At least vote for Proposition 1 and 2. Thank you much. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Ms. Lynch. And our uh, final speaker on this matter is uh, Bob Colburn. Name and address, please. 
<laughs> my name is <laughs> it's Bob Coburn, and that's the first time I've ever had to give my address. 3420 River Bend Road, Muskogee, Oklahoma. Great place to live, to work, to play, to raise a family. Uh, Ex-Mayor Coburn, will you need extra time? Nope, I'll give you some time back. I've uh, been a chamber member for 30 plus years. I'm, I can't be as surprised as Ann to, and boy, uh, to say that, uh, Ann Ong, that I've been here 40 years, but I think I've been 30 plus years as a business chamber member, and I'm proud of it. I'm proud of what we accomplished as a chamber of commerce and as, as tourism. There's some things I think need to be done, and I think you're already, you're already addressing those, and I just want to support your effort and cheer your effort. I think the scope of work and the definition of the scope of work needs a, a, a little work in terms of fine-tuning that and then figuring out what the measurable outcomes are. If you can't tell someone what you want done and tell them how they're going to be measured, it's pretty hard to say, I don't like the job you're doing. Okay. We did a hat box contract. Uh, we did a civic center operations and marketing contract, and we brought both of those back in after a period of time. So I would say maybe just another different third party may or may not be better, could actually be worse than what we're doing now. Leave the, the tourism contract with the Chamber of Commerce and Tourism, rework the contract scope to just the definition of the work and the measurables, and we'll continue to be successful. Thank you. Thank you. That's all that had uh, signed up to speak, and now we can see what the council has to say. Mayor Jean, um, last week in our Public Works Committee, Councilor Coleman made the motion that failed four to four, as many of us was wanting to review and have more information. So having that time to look at the information, um, taking into account Councilor Coleman's original motion, I would like to make an, a re, just a revised motion with, with a little bit more detail. Um, so I would like to move for approval to direct the city manager to relocate the tourism funds to the city of Muskogee through development authority, authorizing and directing the authority to engage <coughs> in the management of the city tourism activities. One as follows, selecting the best source to continue administrating the tourism contract for the city of Muskogee. Two, by entering into those negotiations with the entity chosen as the best source for executing the city's tourism contract with modifying the contract for services using concepts identified by the city attorney for improved accountability, transparency, measurable performance goals. Three, the appointment of the uh, tourism board that would serve as the dedicated subcommittee of the redevelopment authority to manage the contract focus, ensuring measurables, deliverables, and the financial accountability that will include developing a detailed financial plan, grow sales tax revenue, or the tourism revenue through the multi, through a strategic plan, and will leverage the existing Muskogee tourist attractions and events, as well as identifying and prioritizing new initiatives in order to prevent any conflict of interest the Tourism Subcommittee of the Redevelopment Authority with not include any voting members or any staff of board members of the entity administrating the tourism contract. The Tourism Subcommittee will be subject to all open record meeting requirements. The Muskogee Redevelopment Authority will submit the budget and publicize a process for a, to apply for tourism funds through the hotel and motel monies in order to have a fair allocation of all resources for Muskogee attractions. The strategic plan measurables prioritization of the financial allocation of Muskogee attractions and events will be delivered to the city council. I have a question. After you said all that, and it was a lot to be said, is it one of the di diagrams that we are working on here, or did that? It's, it's just it's putting it in the redevelopment authority. Okay, I'm off for that, but it, does it go to the? Because you put a word in there that caught my attention about contracting with the the most uh, the best source. The best source. There's where we. There's the words that kind of caught me off guard. Because in this one, we're giving it back to the chamber, and that's kind of I want the redevelopment authority and the chamber to be there. Are you saying in your deal that you want the redevelopment authority to renegotiate with whoever? 
they would they could either the redevelopment authority could choose to ne renegotiate with the chamber of commerce or if they wanted to seek out it would be up to the redevelopment authority to make the next step that's not exactly what that says there so um, because I'm not opposed to giving it to the chamber and just having the redevelopment the redevelopment authority as just another as Miss Ong said more bureaucracy but uh, I'm not for taking it away from the chamber at all okay I mean we can we can make an amendment that it would stay with the, I just put the added the best horse to okay there's a second well uh, that, there's I, not a second that, yet, so. that, can we open this up to a little further discussion well uh, we have a motion but no second before us can so, they discuss mm -hmm. it okay sure. discuss mm -hmm. away thank you uh, first I've taken time to visit with the leadership at the chamber and uh, I'm impressed to say the least <coughs> with the vision and direction, where they're heading, where they want to head. And this is just the chamber. They've got good, competent staff there. Uh, and I'm excited about some of the new things that, that they're moving forward with. Uh, secondly, uh, and I lost my train of thought, but uh, I think that uh, I'm in agreement with what Marlon said here the other night, I think he said, because I wasn't here, but we could do the trust deal, and, and then I'm in favor of the council, if, if at least at first anyway, picking the membership on the board of directors for tourism. I also think it's very important to have, at the very least, uh, if we had an arrangement with the chamber, uh, a, a kind of a sharing arrangement of certain costs and, and uh, uh, sharing arrangements, uh, and, and with the participation, I would be in favor of DJ, if we have an agreement with the chamber, being a voting board member. I might also be in favor of, let's say, the president. Is that you, Kim? Chair. Okay, chair. Uh, of having uh, a, a vote on that board. Mm -hmm. Now, the majority of the board is all hand-picked by the council at that point. I think it's important that everybody work together and... Uh, everybody's on the same page and certainly two votes coming from the chamber side that's helping administer all this aren't going to carry any big legitimate weight over everybody else but part of what I think about uh, this proposal by Marlin is getting some independence uh, and and some accountability those board members are going to be just like city council members. They're gonna be making the big decisions. It's their decisions that they're gonna make. They're gonna be accountable for their decisions. They've also got the, the, the uh, they're empowered to make those decisions. What they do on that board is important, and that's why we wanna pick people worthy of that appointment. But people worthy of that appointment will rise up to the occasion, and they'll work it, I believe. Uh, so I, I think that's uh, a good way to head. I'll follow up with the the little brain uh, shortage I had earlier, uh, and that is through no fault of the chamber. I, I'm going to have to to take responsibility as a part of the city, but the contract that we've had just laid the way it has for many, many, many years really should have been updated and tweaked and looked at, and we should have identified potential problems. And, and I feel it's the city's fault every bit as much as all the people trying to lay blame to the chamber 
for some of the shortcomings that have arised off of, off of our old contractual obligations. And I don't know that that's necessarily fair. I think that the city should be held accountable to an extent. Now, I don't think anyone here can be blamed. I think this was done way before Mr. Tucker and everybody else. But we didn't tweak it or follow up or have it addressed. And now that some little, little, I say, problems have, have arisen, uh, it's a big deal and everybody's pointing fingers at one direction, it appears to me. And I, I think there's a couple of different directions fingers could be pointed at. So if it were me, what Mr. Coleman has uh, proposed, I think, is a fine idea. And naturally, the confidence I have in the organization and the leadership at the chamber, uh, I'd like to see us continue with them. Let's see how things go under this new structure for the next few years. And if we feel like there needs to be a change down the road, we can make that change. I had one question for Roy. Um, Roy, under the model that you showed here where we go to the trust authority, and uh, the, the real, to me, the, uh, the power is us empowering the board that we select. And I think once we move the funding to that trust authority, and then once the trust authority sets that, the members, that's gonna be very, very important. The current model that you showed us has that trust authority and that tourism board selecting the chamber as that third party, which is what we're Correct. running right now. Yeah. At a later date, if we find that is not sufficient, we would not have to change that model if we wanted to go to another third party, correct? Correct. The same trust authority could exist, mm -hmm. the same tourism board could exist, and we could go still use the, ch the chamber and we could use a third party at the same time. You could do that. Um, the other thing. Um, a combination or different things. As in having multiple contractors? Yes. You, you it would, could. It I would mean, be, you'd have to delineate what yes, it they would were be, supposed to do, but yeah. It would be totally set up to the budget of that tourism board and by that uh, trust authority. Right. And based on the um, recommendations that we've outlined in our memo, um, there are provisions that we had recommended uh, not to change, such as uh, that it be a year-to-year -year contract, yes. that there be the 30-day out clause. So yes. if at any time the trust, under those terms, wanted to make a change, they certainly could. Um, you know, the other thing, and I, and I want to address uh, Councillor Kell's comments on this as well, um, the recommendation of staff is that the chamber not have a voting seat on that. Now, if you want to modify that, then um, <coughs> if Councillor Coleman remakes his motion, which um, addresses adopting staff's recommendations, that is not staff's recommendation, so we need to clarify that. Well, let me ask you this. Would they have a non-voting seat? An ex officio, that's what we've recommended, yes. Okay. Well, and why I ask that question, I, I think it's really important that we put a structure in place that can go forward with us. And, and if it doesn't take, you know, if it doesn't meet our vision currently, which I think it can, I think it's really important that we have momentum right now and we not lose momentum for our community. But we can change that as we see our community needs. And that's what I think the trust authority, the trust is our, is our, is our future and it's the way to go. And I think with all the funding going there, that trust authority can appropriate the, the tourism money to <coughs> each and every entity, such as the, all of our tourism funding, not just for uh, the, what's going to, uh, what would be going for just the tourism that would be going to subcontract out to the, the chamber, but it would also be going to the Batfish, the Three Rivers Museum. It would be going to all of our tourism activities. Is that the role that's being shown on our current format? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, thank you. And Mr. Tucker, for procedural correctness, I'm ready to restate my motion as was stated last week. Okay. But we, we already have a motion on the floor. Right. And so we need a ruling from the chair whether there's going to be a, uh, whether the motion is going to have failed for a second. And so if you want to uh, 
Madam Mayor, if you want to call for a second to um, Councilor Stout's motion, and we'll see if there is a second for her motion. Is there a second? If not, the motion fails. And we would take another motion now. Madam Chair, I'd like to present my motion as stated on last week. Move approval to direct the city manager to reallocate tourism funds from the city of Muskogee to the redevelopment authority, authorizing and directing the authority to engage in the management of the city's tourism contract as follows. One, by entering into negotiations with the Chamber of Commerce for a modified contract for services using concepts discussed as presented by legal and the appointment of a tourism board to manage the contract focus ensuring measurables, deliverables of financial accountability and development of financial plan to grow targeted and existing events and entities and attract others as a part of a destination marketing plan. I second that motion. And for clarity, this motion does not guarantee that any one contractor will exist into perpetuity. What it does is it clarifies the role of the municipal authority as a trust, as well as what the tourism board will actually do in terms of recommending how we proceed forward. It does not eliminate the chamber today, nor does it guarantee that any other vendor may not have an opportunity, but it gives us a structure that we can work from so that we can be more accountable on both ends to be certain that we have tourism that our citizens deserve. All right. I mean, one question. How many people are going to sit on this tourism board? Do we need that or we just need to wait until we get to that point and set those parameters? If I may, the uh, redevelopment authority would make that, would be empowered to make that call. Okay. Uh, you could give them guidance if you want to do so tonight, but that's no. you all. I just was thinking ahead and because there is a lot of valuable people on the tourism board that's set up by the chamber right now and I'd hate to see those people go, well forget y'all, y'all don't want us to do this and walk away. There's valuable people on there that we're going to need as we go forward, and I like. There's some of them that I like to have on there. And so, you'll and you'll have that opportunity. Yeah, I just want to make sure that that that's out there. And if I um, was there a second to Councilor yes. Coleman's motion? Yes, okay. there was. So um, for practical purposes, before y'all vote, let me tell you kind of how this will work. Um, if this motion is approved, uh, what we will do is call a meeting of the Muskogee Redevelopment Authority, and we will create all of these things we've talked about by resolution. And staff will make a presentation of what we think you all might approve. And of course, it can be debated and modified um, as we do in any motion. Um, once that is uh, created, um, we will, well, actually concurrent with um, our preparation of that uh, uh, resolution establishing what we believe is the board, kind of the financial accountability things we've talked about, um, we'll also be going into negotiations with the chamber um, to bring back a, form, a reformed contract. And so you will have the opportunity sitting as the redevelopment authority to make all those decisions for numbers, what individuals you want to carry over from the existing tourism board. The city council uh, in making that motion simply is giving direction to the trust to do those things. And, and However, it is up to the trust to actually uh, carry those out. And at that time, if we want to have a discussion on voting or non-voting board members, we can? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And I appreciate you bringing that up, Mr. Kell. Well, I think we all want the same thing in the long run, and we just need to keep our wits about us and do what's right for Muskogee. Any other discussion? One of the things that I'd like to bring up um, is uh, let's not forget, even though we're transferring tourism dollars uh, to the Muskogee Redevelopment Authority, which will be um, beginning this coming fiscal year, the budget we're looking at approving, uh, we will still have the contract with the chamber as it sits until we substitute it with something else or if we determine that right now we want to cancel that contract. So um, that's one of the other things that uh, will need to be addressed. Uh, in that motion, um, we would work toward a July 1 uh, effective date uh, under Councilor Coleman's motion. And so existing um, tourism contract would continue um, until the end of the fiscal year. Now, there are some things that we would maintain in place, which we have uh, very recently done, such as um, requiring the chamber, and they've been gracious about doing that, 
submitting all of their uh, expenditure reports and financial documentations for those to go through to the City Council under the report of claims. Um, and so I think one of the things, and Gene will have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think we have uh, received the backup documentation necessarily on everything, but we do have the report of claims. So um, that's the only other thing that we would ask for, and then um, that would ensure that as we move forward for the next couple of months until that contract expires um, to meet all of our legal requirements in ensuring that the claims are uh, legally paid. So. Unless you all take other action, that's the process that we'll move, move forward with if this motion passes. So we'll staff will work toward a July 1 date. Contract will maintain as it is, and we've uh, got an agreement where they are providing the uh, claims, and those will be presented for adoption. So just want to clarify those two things before um, you all make the decision uh, how you want to vote. Other discussion? We do have a motion on a second, don't we? Yes, we do. Okay. Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Patrick Kale? Yes. Marlon Coleman? Yes. Derek Reed? Yes. Dan Hall? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Mayor Boydston? Yes, and the motion carries. Thank you very much. And some people look like they might be thinking about leaving. And so, <laughs> if we're going to lose our crowd, we want to remind you to get up early in the morning and to go vote. And take your neighbors and your in-laws and anybody else you can. Because we need to pass the capital improvements. Okay, I think now... Jane. What? Good luck. Uh, item 15. Consider approval to, of the appointment of Megan Green to serve on the Muskogee County Transit Authority, subject to a term to be established in the bylaws or take other necessary action. Uh, yes, this is uh, my matter, and I would like to appoint Megan Green to the Muskogee County Transit Authority. She is a young lady that uh, I got acquainted with who actually uses the track, the Traction Transit Authority, and I think she would be great. And so I move the, that we approve her appointment. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Boydston. Yes, and the motion carries. Item 16. Discuss the 2019 CIP proposed projects and activities related to the May 14 special election and take other necessary action. Uh, yes. Mayor. Yes, Mayor and members of council. Um, the mayor has already given the speech, so we do. We know we have an election tomorrow. I'm going to talk just real quickly to make sure that we're all on the same page, that we are renewing a tax that was set to expire later this year. Remember, that tax was primarily used for sewer upgrades in the past and other capital improvement projects. So when we say we're going to use this money to improve streets, it's because the money previously wasn't used for streets, but now we can. So that's, uh, that's the excitement. Just a reminder, the, the major sewer project was uh, along the Cootie Creek uh, area. And so a lot of people don't see that. If it doesn't come right through your backyard, you may miss it. But it's been a big improvement in our city. Um, and we're able to not use the, uh, the, the renewal money for uh, sewer upgrades and we're going to be able to use it for streets this time. And also our, some of the big projects from our last capital improvement and investing in our community uh, was the Martin Luther King Center. So we want to just make sure and reassure the public that we have used the money that was in the last tax as intended, and we do propose different uses for the tax this time around, and we'll also use them as intended. So here's the ballot propositions. And basically we propose renewing that tax, and when you see it written out like that, you realize that it's, 0 0.0033 is what we're asking for for streets. Uh, this adds up to half a cent. Um, real quick, Proposition 1 is regarding the streets. It is a sales tax renewal. When it comes to streets, we get what we pay for. And so uh, we can only buy so much asphalt and concrete with so much money. If we want to fix the streets, this is our one chance to get a dollar-for-dollar dollar match from the City of Muskogee Foundation to turn about $12 million worth of tax dollars into $24 million worth of street improvements. That will do about 100 miles of residential streets. That's Proposition 1. 
Proposition two, also part of the sales tax renewal, keeping the sales tax rate the same, but getting new things and more investment in our community. Public safety among the dozen or so projects that are listed, police and fire 911 center among the many other projects. Um, we've been talking about this for a long time, and so I don't want to spend a lot of time necessarily talking about it tonight. We just have three things to, to end with. Remember, a sales tax renewal, the same tax we're already paying, but we're going to either have $24 million for streets over the next six years in addition to what we have, or we're going to have zero. We're going to have $6 million for community investment or zero. And so uh, our election is tomorrow. So this is our last chance to talk about it. I just want to make sure that uh, amongst ourselves uh, that we're making every effort to get out the vote. It is the only thing on the ballot. So for us to make sure people know what's going on in our community, uh, thank you for, for taking a few minutes today um, to review that and, um, and try and remember to get people out to vote tomorrow. Amen. Don't forget. <laughs> Do we need to take any action on this at all? No, ma'am. No, just, just the, the get out the vote kind That's of action, right. not any public body action. Okay. Uh, then item 17. Hold a public hearing to discuss the City of Muskogee budget for fiscal year 2019-2020 and take other necessary action. <clears throat> at this time, we will open the public hearing and uh, hear from Mr. Miller. Yes, thank you, Mayor and members of council. Again, another project we've worked on for a long time, and I'll try and, and speed through it, but it's one of the, obviously one of the most important things we do in any given year. So I wanted to make sure uh, before we move forward that uh, we cover all the things that we've done thus far, as far as talking about it in depth at the retreat, having a public hearing last week, and then bringing it forward this week based off of the questions and input um, that we've had through that time. So this is the proposed budget. Um, we will ask at the end to see if you are willing to adopt it for this fiscal year. Um, a few things from last year or for this current year that we just want to emphasize. A couple of our main highlights. We've been focused on streets. We need to continue to. Uh, two of the big things we've done is stretch our existing street dollars with a partnership for Muskogee Creek Nation for Smith Ferry Road improvements in front of Hilldale Road. And then working with the federal government on uh, phase two of uh, economic development grant on the east side of town in our industrial area. Both of these allow us to take existing dollars and get more money from our partners to try and get things done in our community. We also this year had um, our festival ballooning, our first ever, and we're getting ready to have our second in August. It worked really well. <clears throat> Forgive me. So we tried something new and we liked uh, how it worked. Uh, also getting uh, a hat box um, ready for other tourism events. We've had our first RV rally. We've built out uh, the dance hall building and renovations are going on at the hangar as well. So quickly to get to this year's budget, we always want to remember our budget principles, what we have in mind every year. Keep our expenses less than our revenue. Use our carryover for one-time mid-year projects, not operations. That's our special project fund, as you guys may recall. If we have an extra dollar, we use it for strategic initiatives. We want to budget for good surprises and keep our operational expenses flat. Here is our uh, budget history. <clears throat> we want to show our dedication to keeping the red line below the blue line. So our F FY18 actual, we were very successful. As we finish FY19, we also anticipate that red line being well below the blue line, but we're also going to keep budgeting for that to happen. That's very important and fundamental. Here are the basics as we go through our budget packet, um, as we have many times before. Um, page 12 is kind of your home base for a lot of the funds. That's what the general fund looks like at the very top level, and we're going to run through some of the things that we're getting for our money. So where we put extra money this year uh, is in streets, in city beautification. Our uh, proactive facilities budget continues. We put more money into water and sewer infrastructure, uh, and then employee wage increases and public image are two important things that the council has identified to spend money on. Uh, we also continued our matching grant fund and these other initiatives as well. Uh, one big thing I want to talk about, uh, it's not a huge dollar amount, but it's important for our police. Um, this is the, the, the increase that we have as far as police goes, about $26,000 towards an uh, athletic um, program that they think is going to be very important in community outreach. We'll be hearing a lot more about that through the year. Um, I wanted to address uh, Mr. Hall's question from last week on page 61, uh, which showed that uh, the firefighter, our projected um, expense last year for, uh, for this current fiscal year was off. Otherwise, um, that page has changed or, or has stayed the same, but we did change the projection for this year. Um, so that cost uh, 
that that's the only change that we made since we presented last week. So I did want to highlight that it wasn't a change to the budget; it was a change in the projections. Um, as we continue through the budget, um, we'll move on to Civic Center again, uh, saving some more than one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars from when we outsourced it. Um, we do anticipate having uh, some MRA. Um, um, some money from economic development going to MRA to help uh, with events there. The Hatbox Field Enterprise budget is on page 94. We've talked some about that, about capitalizing on the tourism opportunities there and having a person to help staff those and monitor those buildings. Um, Hatbox Sports, again, about a $200,000 savings versus when we had that outsourced. Um, we're getting new vehicles for the police through their capital outlay that will make almost all the patrol and investigator cars be 2014 or newer. Um, economic development budget is very important. You see how that is allocated. And we'll have, uh, we are looking to um, change the um, restricted reserve or the, the money we put set aside for the economic development. We're looking to change that and raise the percentage of money we put into the, uh, the incentive fund, for lack of a better term, uh, to help our recruitment efforts and spend less on operations. So that is, uh, if this budget passes that, it's an agenda item later on the agenda to do that and uh, change the percentage uh, and raise it for more money for the set aside. Hotel motel tax, we talked about that at length. I think based off our discussion and our previous vote, we'll be moving this, uh, we'll probably have, ask for an amendment for this budget if we approve uh, to move this money into the redevelopment authority. Uh, but uh, as you can see, and as we've discussed, uh, those are the allocations. Um, I would emphasize the tourism contract um, is not any different than say our um, our street contract. We know next year we're gonna do about $2 million worth of work on streets. Um, we don't know who those contractors are, but we're going ahead and approving the budget. And that's that's the situation. This doesn't lock us into any particular course of action except the course of action outlined in the previous agenda item. So just having a tourism contract in the budget does not uh, doesn't affect us either way. It just lets us move forward with the budget. Um, our special projects funds on page 132. Um, we do hope uh, to add money to that fund this year, but that will be developed uh, mid-year as is outlined in our ordinance. Um, MMA. Uh, we've talked a lot about this as one of our big successes. Um, $2.1 million in new money set aside for capital projects and equipment. And uh, our two of our new things that we're going to really be working on um, a lot faster are funding for our street cuts. So when we uh, find a water leak under the street, we'll have money to fix it really quickly. And, and also for our water leaks, try and get caught up on those. We have the money to do it, and we're going to make a very strong effort to do so. Uh, Muskogee Redevelopment Authority, I think we're going to uh, ask again for an amendment so that we make sure that the hotel motel tax money is moving through the MRA um, as allocated. Uh, capital outlay, very important. Um, this is uh, money that we try and stretch. We either try and match uh, a, uh, a funding where we spend a dollar now and we can get uh, save the money later, or um, we try and make sure we're doing something that helps improve um, the experience that our citizens are having in the city. So you see uh, those items there on page 141 and following, and certainly on this list, and I think one of note, of course, is our opportunity to look at uh, solar panels at the Civic Center, which is a, uh, would save us a lot of money long range. Um, other funds we'll talk about briefly, uh, River Country Water Park, Swim and Fitness, Park Development Fund, all have no general fund subsidy. The airport, also no general fund subsidy. Uh, so here we're, here's where we are. I appreciate your patience. I know the council's heard this many times. And so we, we uh, have tried to apply our strategy. We've listened to the council all year long. Our staff has done a tremendous amount of work. I, I see Gene and Marcy here from our finance department. Um, Roy and his office have done a ton of work to try and get us ready to be able to do these things tonight. Um, so I would uh, certainly entertain any questions. Um, and when the time's appropriate, we would have a, uh, if there was a motion to approve, it would be also to amend the budget to move the uh, hotel motel tax dollars into um, the MRA uh, as discussed and outlined in this budget. I make a motion to approve the 2020 budget year and make a amendment. Uh, we need to close the public oh, hearing. sorry. So the public hearing is closed and now let's hear your Thank motion. You. Make a motion to approve the 2020 budget year with an amendment to move the funding from hotel motel tax uh, to the MRA. Second. Okay, any 
Yeah, just to, to clarify, uh, Deputy Mayor, that would it be also to be allocated as outlined in this budget yes. through the MRA? Thank you Thank very you. much. Okay. Any further discussion? Um, Mayor, one other thing. Um, and I lost my train of thought about that. Um, but we were, um, hold on, it'll come to me. It was important. Oh, uh, it did come to me. Uh, when you close the public hearing, um, would you verify for the record that it's because we didn't have anybody signed up to speak? That's right. Okay. We did not have anyone uh, signed up to speak to this Thank you. Uh, item. So now we'll have the roll call. Can I ask a quick question, please? Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, if just by chance, and I do, I'm just saying if just by chance our CIP doesn't pass tomorrow, will there be any room for budget amendments if we pass this tonight? We have until uh, June 23rd, we have the option to come back and um, uh, make any changes or amendments to this budget. Um, after uh, June 23rd, we will need to do a formal budget amendment, which requires additional hearings and things like that. But Thank yes. You. Other discussion or questions? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Patrick Kale? Yes. Derek Reed? Yes. Dan Hall? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Mayor Boydston? Yes. And the motion carries. Uh, item 18. Consider approval of resolution number 2764 approving the City of Muskogee budget for fiscal year 2019-2020 and establishing budget amendment authority or take other necessary action. So, yeah, so uh, Mayor and Members of Council, I may have gotten ahead of myself, uh, Mr. Tucker, is that the, uh, do we need to make that amendment at this particular time to, uh, so we propose again the same motion, but uh, amending the actual resolution that's before you. So I, I jumped the gun a bit, but I we wanted to make sure that we made the have that MRA amendment in there. So. Well, if you're going to prove it twice, might, um, prove it once, you might as well prove it twice. Oh, so. thank you. I think that's. I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, we're really serious. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Roll call. I don't have a motion. Mm -hmm. Oh, we don't have a motion. I move for approval. Again. Uh, can, Again. Uh, and was that the same, uh, same, the same as, motion that we made in the, over the last agenda? Yes, item? the same said so the same motion Wayne, Deputy Mayor just Wayne Johnson just made. Okay. Second. And a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Patrick Kale? Yes. Derek Reed? Yes. Dan Hall? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Mayor Boydston. And the motion finally carries. Yes. Hmm. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I want to clarify one thing. The reason why it was necessary to actually approve the resolution is because in the motion adopting the budget, it did not provide uh, authority for the manager to move items around within funds, and so that's why it was necessary to adopt the um, formal resolution. Okay. Item twenty. Nineteen. Nineteen. I want to get fired. <laughs> Item 19, please. Consider approval of ordinance number 4069A, amending the City of Muskogee Code of Ordinances by amending Chapter 74, Taxation, Article 8, Use Tax, by amending Section 74-237, Economic Development Fund, modifying a apportionment of tax to the Economic Development Fund general account and the Economic Opportunity Account for fiscal year 2020 only, providing for repealer severability and declaring an emergency or take other necessary action. Mr. Tucker. Uh, Madam uh, Mayor and uh, members of the council, uh, this uh, ordinance uh, will reflect uh, effectively what has been presented in the budget. Um, it will modify uh, the way funding is deposited um, in our, from our use tax into the Economic Development Fund. Uh, for this fiscal year, it will be 66.67%, uh, which will be deposited into the general fund, uh, with 33.33% deposited in the Economic Opportunity Account. So uh, that is the only change to this ordinance. As many of you know, we have uh, discussed this, I wouldn't say every year, but certainly every other year, uh, where have we have delayed some level of funding from that uh, fund to be able to um, meet our other obligations in the general fund. And so uh, this is one of the years where we've got uh, um, 
where we're making a commitment to put a significant amount of dollars into that fund. So uh, this is a very positive change. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, additionally, uh, this does have an emergency with it, which will require a separate motion. I move for approval and declaring and then We'll, we'll approve it and then we'll declare the emergency okay. after so, that. Okay. So I move for approval. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Boydston. Yes. And the uh, motion carries and the emergency. We and we make a motion that we're declaring this as an emergency. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Patrick Kale? Yes. Derek Reed? Yes. Dan Hall? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Mayor Boydston? Yes, and the motion carries. Item 20. Consider approval of Resolution 2763 authorizing the continuation of the account fund for the City of Muskogee entitled Solid Waste Improvements and designating the manner in which said account shall be operated for the upcoming budget year 2019-2020 or take other necessary action. Uh, Mr. Riley. <clears throat> yes, Mayor and Council. Um, this is our uh, yearly uh, uh, ordinance, a resolution that will um, allow us to fund our solid waste improvements fund. Um, Two dollars and fifty cents from each monthly service fee is collected and put into this fund, which is for our, our solid waste improvements, which includes our um, purchase of uh, uh, trash cans, uh, dumpsters, and um, and trucks and equipment needed for solid waste. And uh, but we have to answer any questions and we recommend approval. Move for approval. One second. Are there any questions or discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Jamie Stout. Oh, wow. Yes. Some people signed. Mayor Boydston. <laughs> Yes, and the motion carries. Uh, now is the time for um, public comment. Uh, and we have a couple of people who have signed up. Uh, Mr. Tarwater, I don't believe, is here. He must have gone. And the other one is uh, Council Member Jamie Stout. Jamie Stout, 319 Kingsway. Um, I just wanted to congratulate the Muskogee War Memorial Park on being recipients of the Red Bed Award for the Remember Fallen exhibit that was out there last year. Um, the staff honored 127 Oklahomans featured in the exhibit over social media that lost their lives serving our country. Um, the Oklahoma Travel Industry Association awarded the War Memorial Park um, the Red Bed Award for Best Social Media campaign during the Oklahoma Conference of Tourism on May 6th and 7th, just this past week. So the Redbird Awards recognize efforts of attractions and other agencies contributing to the Oklahoma tourism. So just congratulations again, Brent and the staff out at War Memorial Park. Job well done. Yes, we're all proud of the batfish. Um, let me see, uh, item 21. Consider an executive session to discuss and take possible action on the following. A, pursuant to section 307B2, <coughs> Title 25, Oklahoma statutes, consider convening an executive session to discuss negotiations with the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, local number 2465, and if necessary, take appropriate action in open session. Uh, yes, I'll be happy. I'll be happy to address that. All right, thank you. Um, there's not a need to go into executive session at this time. <coughs> and we'd respectfully withdraw the item. Oh. Well, that concludes our agenda then. And with one final reminder to be sure and vote tomorrow, we will be adjourned. Yes, we do have. Uh, several other meetings. We have other meetings. We have.
Yeah. Okay, we're not adjourned. <laughs> we will go into the Muskogee Redevelopment Authority meeting. Of uh, roll call. Oh, okay. 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 Mayor Janie Boydston here. Evelyn Hibbs here. Dan Hall here. Marlon Coleman, Jamie Stout here. Wayne Johnson here. Patrick Kale here. Ivory Van, Derek Reed here. Uh, item one. Consider approval of MRA minutes April 15th, 2019. Ready for approval? Second. Uh, roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Patrick Kale? Yes. Derek Reed? Yes. Dan Hall? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Mayor Boydston? <laughs> the motion carries item two. Is that a yes? Hmm? Did you vote yes? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I always vote yes. Oh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> Consider approval of resolution number 2760, approving the Muskogee Redevelopment Authority budget for fiscal year 2019-2020 and establishing budget amendment authority or take other necessary action. Mr. Miller. Yes, um, as we discussed in the budget uh, uh, line item or agenda item, I think it's also appropriate to amend the uh, MRA budget here in the same fashion, um, accepting the money from the uh, City of Muskogee budget into the Redevelopment Authority budget and appropriating it as discussed. I move for approval. Second. Discussion. And, and so just for clarification for the third time that's the same motion. The same motion. All yes. right. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Boydston. Yes, and the motion carries, and that uh, is the end of the uh, agenda for the Muskogee Redevelopment Authority. We will go in to the Muskogee Municipal Authority and roll call. Mayor Janie Boydston. Here. Evelyn Hibbs. Here. Dan Hall. Here. Marlon Coleman. Jamie Stout. Here. Wayne Johnson. Here. Patrick Kale. Here. Ivory Van. Derek Reed. Yes. Here. Okay. Item one. Consider approval of MMA minutes of April the 8th, 2019. Move for approval. Second. Discussion, roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Boydston. Yes, and the motion carries item two. Consider approval of MMA claims for the month ending April 30, 2019. Mr. Miller. Yes, you have before you the claims. Um, we do recommend approval. Right, move for approval. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Boydston. Yes, and the motion carries. Item three. Consider approval of resolution number 2761, approving the Muskogee Municipal Authority budget for fiscal year 2019-2020 and establishing budget amendment authority or take other necessary action. Mr. Miller. Yes, um, as we discussed, the MMA budget is before you. Please do notice the water and sewer infrastructure projects line on the expenditures of uh, $2.1 million. That is uh, the fund that you all have set up and, and has been very effective for us. So we want to acknowledge that and we do recommend approval. Move for approval. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Patrick Kale. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Mayor Boydston. Yes. The motion carries and we will adjourn the Muskogee Municipal Authority and go into the special call meeting of the Muskogee Parking Authority. Roll call. Mayor Janie Boydston. Here. Evelyn Hibbs. Here. Dan Hall. Here. Marlon Coleman. Jamie Stout. Here. Wayne Johnson. Here. Patrick Kale. Here. Ivory Van. Derek Reed. Here. Uh, item one. Consider approval of special call parking authority minutes May 21, 2018. Move for approval. Second. 
Discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Patrick Kale? Yes. Derek Reed? Yes. Dan Hall? Yes. Jamie Stack? <coughs> yes. Mayor Boydston? Yes, and the motion uh, carries. Item two. Consider approval of resolution number 2762, approving the Muskogee Parking Authority budget for fiscal year 2019-2020 and establishing budget, budget amendment authority or take other necessary action. Mr. Miller. Yes, it's pretty straightforward. We have our parking authority budget before you. Um, we'll be happy to answer any questions and uh, do recommend approval. Mr. Miller, at one time, weren't we looking at changing our parking rates? Uh, we did adopt a uh, change in park parking rates as part of um, about a year and a half ago with our when we changed our, our fee structure. So we did do that, and that's reflected here. Okay. Didn't change the outcome of the budget very much. <coughs> um, we did change it um, partway through the fiscal 18 year. So that's okay. probably why if we had a 17 year, I think you would see the, the, a bigger change. That's where it's reflected. Yes. Thank you. Appreciate that. <coughs> Do we have a motion? <coughs> Move for approval. Do we have a second? Second. <clears throat> Any discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor Wayne Johnson? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Patrick Kale? Yes. Derek Reed? Yes. Dan Hall? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Mayor Boydston? Yes. And the motion carries. And uh, we will adjourn the. <laughs>